but the question is also anyway that the kind of human understanding is something which still uh, goes over our kind of the, uh, the fact that we are living creatures mm -hmm. with our kind of experience of the world so that makes a kind of really fundamental change regarding right. the autonomous uh, kind of capacity of ours and then the whatever genetic algorithms or uh, all kinds of systems that we uh, can have around us so right. they, they are kind of simulations of those capacities right not and the capacity that's itself very shallow ones yes. the shallow, shallow ones yeah. in that sense of course the more we increase this kind of complexities by adding adding this kind of uh, robotic features so such they they kind of can bring bring some unpredictability so to say yeah so that and but I think it's not the main major concern even nowadays right right and, and there I mean what you mentioned about having this more kind of a embodied experience maybe with, with robots I mean there the interesting question is is kind of a it's kind of like a Wittgensteinian thought that like um, that in a sense I mean maybe maybe these machines end up being more like animals and like Wittgenstein said that like uh, even if lions could speak we couldn't understand them a lot of, lot of Wittgenstein yeah that's right yes <laughs> exactly it, it, uh, yeah it makes a big difference yes um, that like the, the representations that you can learn in this world I mean like might not always match with the ones that like we have yes and it, it is actually an interesting challenge be because it all also means that like even if we are able to develop these machines it might never feel that we had quite gained the AI because even though these machines work perfectly and they do exactly what we want, we don't quite understand why mm. they behave the way they do. So. And that's why this explanation capacity, it has actually been, it must be even I came to this field in the 80s, but it had been a point of discussion even the, with the rule-based systems that how do the systems explain their actions and choices Absolutely, yeah. and with neural networks and multi-layer neural networks and so on so that's even more a question yeah. but then the question is also that we don't know each other's kind of uh, yeah. systems and we don't know even our own kind right. of processes so the cognitive processes are definitely such that we can't say why we chose to do like this and not that yes because it's this kind of uh, which I think like results to human to human conflicts oftentimes that you just don't understand the other person's intentions well yes enough, so. yes and that's why we need to be quite humble absolutely uh, I would say that that's why it's one part of my project so to say is to promote that hu humble kind of uh, approach and uh, way of considering others and this kind of forgiving so to say yes. and uh, well, I would say even gratefulness so that because uh, human capacity to achieve many things is based on our collaboration so right. kind of uh, building on the collaboration has been the kind of basis for human uh, success so we should kind of always aim at towards that right. but then the question is that if we think about the questions regarding uh, war and peace, peace and war. So, uh, how would you say about the question that is the? Uh, it's of course may go outside of your normal kind of or everyday kind of area, but anyway, I would like to ask the question that what what you talk about or what would you mention or comment on on how to devise these kind of ways to push or guide us towards more peaceful kind of situation because my uh, approach has been to kind of uh, point out three main areas mm -hmm. like methodology related uh, common understanding or and this meaning negotiation not to construct a kind of common ground because that's how I see impossible to certain extent uh, kind of way but then we have to take into account emotions and understand our fears and so on and then these systems could kind of model and give us good uh, advice on those in a large scale for millions and millions of people but then the third area is that how do we organize our democracies or our societies economies and so on but uh, was it so have you read the peace machine book uh, I do have it and actually I have started unfortunately I haven't like finished the book yet so. yes 
but it's a lot of content. Yeah, yes. So, uh, what is your current kind of uh, situation regarding that? So, if you uh, put together these questions and your own right. experience in the field of machine learning and other things like this, so are there something kind of what what would your your take? into this field so uh, absolutely and I, I think actually it is surprising how um, how relevant these questions are so one might think that like it is extremely far-fetched and, 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 and the, the, the machine learning has nothing to do with the, with the things that you mentioned on the other hand like I, I think that there starts to be a very acute understanding that mm. given the, the powerful tool that we have in our hands I mean with the powerful tool comes a great responsibility yes and, and like oftentimes I mean at the end of the day these tools are being applied to in a human context I mean, it's not only in, in astronomy and in physics where maybe it doesn't, well, I mean, it matters in other ways, but I mean, the, the thing is that, like, I, I think, I think that, the, like, we really have to, like, face these questions, like, uh, like very explicitly, and I, I remember, for instance, at the, at the latest um, NIPS conference, I mean, there was a keynote talk about, about bias. Neural information processing exactly. system, which is the largest, yeah, or most important, main, 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 main machine learning and right. so on. So, and there, there was the kind of a keynote talk about the, the very, like, inherent, like, a big bias, uh, like, human bias that we can have in these models if, yes. if we don't, if we are not humble enough, and if yes. we don't understand these processes enough. And then also, I mean, like what you what you mentioned about these other uh, societal things. I mean, also that the question that like if you if you just apply these methods without the necessary like moral compass, mm. uh, you can you can actually like um, you can you can like end up like uh, enforcing some some like less desirable uh, features in, in the society. So so I, I think it is it is extremely extremely relevant and like it is actually not that far fetched on at all. And I, I think even. Even even like larger companies who do feel their like a societal responsibility are starting to realize that they have to do something about it, yes, and and like have to have to understand these things better. And of course, as an extension, I mean, like if we do it well, if we are humble enough, I mean, we can definitely start applying them to, to kind of uh, the, like uh, to surface some of the things that you mentioned. So. Yes, somehow the capacities we have at hand also give a chance to do something in a better way. And uh, to me, it has been really kind of long-term uh, kind of uh, enthusiasm regarding emergence. Mm -hmm. So that the because so many of these questions are philosophically really, I would uh, dare to say, very deep, right. and they have been discussing uh, discussed for thousands of years regarding what is the world, this ontology about the, what what do we have around us, and then epistemology. How do we model it? How do we make it conceptually or linguistically yeah. kind of understandable and communicatable and so on? But then the question regarding emergence in these matters, especially in epistemology, has been such that the old philosophers couldn't really have a uh, possibility to, to study emergence because right. the computational modeling is actually the only uh, really functional way to kind of deal with uh, emergence right. and that's why I think we are living now a new time not only from the practical point of view but really from the deep philosophical point of view. It is and then I, I guess this goes back to maybe our earlier discussion about the, the scientific method Yes. and, and also that of course it, it requires that we, we change our like ways of, of, of researching these topics as well as you pointed out I mean it's the only way to figure this out uh, is, 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 is through simulations um, at the, on the one hand, it opens up possibilities, and in, in, in some other ways, uh, it, it maybe makes makes it hard to kind of explain, explain like and, and like produce and like explanation and descriptive models in, in the way we are used to. So, so I mean, it is it is in a way, I mean, like a double-edged sword, so so to speak. So. Yes. So we are living in a very increasingly, I would say, complex world. Yeah. So we have many kinds of opportunities, but maybe it's frightening from the point of view that many people feel that they are being kind of uh, taken even further away from understanding the world in such a way that they would be able to somehow uh, control their faith and to have a chance right. to and I, yeah and i i think um an interesting challenge to the point of emergence is that like nowadays it is so easy to build machines that we don't understand mm. and uh, and it, it is actually an interesting problem that like maybe this is actually a new 
that are in, in, in engineering in the sense that, uh, that like in the old days we were able to build cathedrals and then bridges that were somewhat like very tangible and un understandable, at least for the practitioners of the field. Whereas nowadays, I mean, like if, if you look at uh, like an average mid-sized tech company, they can easily build systems that no single person in the company understands. Of course, yes. And uh, and like, and, and in a way, I mean, it opens up possibilities. I mean, oftentimes these systems are very capable, but I mean, like you pointed out on the one hand, it, it like uh, it in increases our level of uh, like uh, uncomfortability that we don't know what's going on. And on the other hand, like also like limits our ability to make actual like incremental progress. Mm. Since I mean, like if everything is, is just emergent and like we it's more like alchemy rather yes. than like really <laughs> really science. So I think and like actually like one of the things that I've been really focusing on over the past couple of years is to think that like how can we take these extremely powerful tools and make them such that like instead of like building something that we have no clue how it works, we can take this almost like a baby step, small incre more incremental steps. And like start like kind of and building the parts of the process exactly and, and and really the big motivation there is that like and it's not only about like having a, a single person but how can we make it so that like a good number of people also i mean like maybe in the best case everybody could understand mm. what's going on and also i mean like just making sure that people know that i mean there's it's not rocket science i mean honestly i feel that rocket science is seen very <laughs> that many of the things we are doing but i mean it, it, it's actually like no magic it's no magic so i mean it's just like layers and layers of things that then like result to something amazing yes but i, I think it, it will be especially at the societal level extremely beneficial like as we can like uh, increase the baseline so to speak that more and more people can like understand like more and more what's going on and then like we can kind of build on the on the shoulders of existing developments and like finally i mean start like really solving those problems that seem unsolvable today so. and that's the uh, kind of uh, line of reasoning something why i feel that at schools it would be important uh, even more than before to study science, uh, the philosophy of science and sci uh, philosophy in general. So because the kind of what is there, how we reason about things and so on, that's the kind of important starting point. Yeah. And what we can understand about things and how do these new ways of building our understanding how they work and how they can be used and what can be deduced and what can't be deduced and so on that's right like right and i think i mean there uh, i think now more than ever it would be actually extremely useful to to have an education system that like would teach the kind of the the, 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 the kind of the history of science philosophy and like many of the, these like classical topics mm. since it is so easy to take these new methods and actually like reinvent the same wheels that the creek O, o, like invented already like a few thousand years ago mm. and then feel that like we are onto something like very new although yeah. that's not exactly, exactly. the case so. and i think we are still uh, strongly humans we also the, even within the uh, in the middle of these machines so that's the case and i would like to actually mention about that because i learned to know about you as a very uh, cultivated and culturally oriented person so i i learned that you kind of uh, wrote your comments in code for of your own code in Latin yes. language. Ba back in the day. I mean, now I'm way more polite. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and yeah. then then I remember that when we were working together, and then you, there might be some evening discussions about the kind of you were interested in uh, Russian literature and so on. Yeah. Have you continued, by the way, that that uh, one? Unfortunately, not at the same degree. But I, I honestly, I feel that like kind of a, that that was a very useful foundation and I would really highly recommend and actually it much relates to just the, the, the humbleness and like understanding the, the human behavior I think I mean like fiction fiction literature is, is one of the best ways maybe the best way how, how humans have managed to explain like human behavior and is the there some beings. kind of recommendation for someone because I have to admit <coughs> that I haven't read uh, Russian literature <laughs> right uh, but is there some particular uh, that yeah, so well, I mean, of course, I mean, it much goes to personal preferences. Of so course, but that's just that's right. Uh, well, I, I happen to like focus on like a very, how would I say, like a very like a, like a down to earth, uh, like uh, like uh, authors at, uh, back in the day, like well, just out of I, I don't know, I mean, by coincidence, I was much into Maxim Gorky and like uh, Chekhov and, yes. and, and, and uh, to a degree Dostoevsky also at the time. Of course, I mean, I am sure that there are many many other lines of literature that like would be. Yes, but that I think it's good to start and work from some 
basis, right. and I, I assume that those are not bad choices at all. So that they are. Uh, I mean, like at least those are the ones that I know. <laughs> yes, yes. But anyway, so because that's something I would like to mention here in between about that, because many people are concerned.